before they'd heard a minute of testimony. Democrats had already made up their mind and chosen their tactics. Delay, obstruct, and resist. Whatever it took, whatever the truth really was, they were going to do whatever they could to stop this qualified, experienced, and mainstream nominee. This confirmation process has become a national disgrace. The Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process, but you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. Since my nomination in July, there's been a frenzy on the left to come up with something, anything, to block my confirmation. Democrats have signaled for months they'd put on whatever performance the far left special interests demanded and throw all the mud, all the mud, they could manufacture. Well, it's not like they didn't warn us. But even by the far left's standards, this shameful, shameful smear campaign has hit a new low. Some of you were lying in wait and had it ready. This first allegation was held in secret for weeks by a Democratic member of this committee and by staff. It would be needed only if you couldn't take me out on the merits. When it was needed, this allegation was unleashed and publicly deployed over Dr. Ford's wishes. And then, and then, as no doubt was expected, if not planned, came a long series of false last minute smears designed to scare me and drive me out of the process before any hearing occurred. Crazy stuff, gangs, illegitimate children, fights on boats in Rhode Island, all nonsense reported breathlessly and often uncritically by the media. Senate Democrats <clears throat> and their allies are trying to destroy a man's personal and professional life on the basis of decades old allegations that are unsubstantiated and uncorroborated. That, Mr. President, is where we are. This is what the so-called resistance has become. A smear campaign, pure and simple, aided and abetted by members of the United States Senate. Are you aware that at 923, on the night of July the 9th, the day you were nominated to the Supreme Court, by President Trump, Senator Schumer said, 23 minutes after your nomination, I will oppose Judge Kavanaugh's nomination with everything I have. I have a bipartisan, and I hope a bipartisan majority will do the same. The stakes are simply too high for anything less. Well, if you weren't aware of it, you are now. Did you meet with Senator Dianne Feinstein on August 20th? I did meet with Senator Feinstein. Did you know that her staff had already recommended a lawyer to Dr. Ford? Did you know that her and her staff had this alleg allegations for over 20 days? Eight weeks ago, Democrats on the Judiciary Committee received a letter from Dr. Christine Blasey Ford with an uncorroborated allegation of misconduct. She had requested the matter be handled discreetly and confidentially. The responsible next step would have been alerting the full committee so a confidential bipartisan investigation could begin. Committee staff would have followed their standard practice for investigating background information. Senators could have questioned Judge Kavanaugh in their meetings or in closed session while respecting Dr. Ford's request for confidentiality. <clears throat> Oh, but Democrats didn't do any of that. They sat on Dr. Ford's letter for seven weeks, seven weeks, kept it secret, 
They did nothing. They bid the time. And then they threw Professor Ford's wishes overboard and leaked it, leaked it to the press. Our colleague from Delaware has himself indicated that either the ranking member's office or the Democratic Committee staff likely leaked the document. Mr. Chairman, would, would the ranking member um, answer a question, please? If I can. I, I have great respect for Senator Feinstein. We've worked together on many topics, and I believe what you just said. Can you tell us that your staff did not leak it? Oh, I don't believe my staff would leak it. I have not asked that question directly, but do you, I do, do not believe they would. you know that? Would. I mean, how in the world could that get in the hands of the, of the press? The answer the is people... no. The staff have you, have you asked did your, not. Have you asked your staff or other I staff members did. of the Judiciary Committee? Uh, that, you, pardon me? Well, uh, yes. Jennifer well, reminds me I've asked her before about it, well, somebody, and that's true. Well, somebody leaked it if it wasn't you. Well, it was, I'm telling you, it was not, I did not. As I've noted, we know the chain of custody of the letter went through the Democratic side of the Judiciary Committee. So, Mr. President, does this sound like Democratic senators take their responsibilities seriously and want to get to the truth? Or does it sound like a choreographed smear campaign that ignored Dr. Ford's request for confidentiality in order to inflict <clears throat> maximum damage, maximum damage at the last minute on Judge Kavanaugh and his family. If you wanted an FBI investigation, you could have come to us. What you want to do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. You said that. But Democrats, wouldn't let a few inconvenient things, like a complete lack of evidence or an accuser's request for confidentiality to get between them and a good smear. It's despicable. And the contrast with the completely professional conduct of Chairman Grassley could not be starker. As soon as Chairman Grassley learned about this allegation, he handled it through proper channels. He immediately began gathering the facts. His office promptly conducted a transcribed interview of Judge Kavanaugh in which, under penalty of felony, he unequivocally denied the last minute allegation. And the office received statements from all the other supposed witnesses that they either directly contradicted the story or denied knowing anything about it. What's more, Chairman Grassley ensured that Dr. Ford could be heard in a forum of her own choosing, either here or in California, either in public or in private, either with the staff or with the members. But the smear campaign didn't stop there. That was just act one, just act one. According to the reporter of this second allegation, the accuser, quote, came forward because Senate Democrats began looking, and now they're calling for even further delays and further obstruction over a second decades-old allegation that is so thin and so unsupported that the New York Times refused to even run a story about it. This claim is so dubious that the New York Times passed on the story entirely after looking into it. Here's why the New York Times declined to publish. Quote, interviewed several dozen people over the past week in an attempt to corroborate her story and could find no one, no one with firsthand knowledge, not one person with firsthand knowledge to support the allegation, but rather multiple on the record denials again. The Times also reported that the claimant said she herself is uncertain of her claim. That's the New York Times, whose credo is all the news that's fit to print. 
and had found this latest last minute allegation not even fit to print. Oh, but that hadn't stopped Judiciary Committee Democrats from shoveling it into their smear campaign and demanding for further delays. They kept this one secret from Republicans, too, by the way. Evidently, several Democratic offices knew of this allegation for at least a week. But like with Dr. Ford's claim, they sat on this one, too. So the committee could not take any proper action. They just wanted it to wind up in the press. If you wanted an FBI investigation, you could have come to us. What you want to do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. You said that. Another orchestrated last minute hit on the nominee. And now they're acting like it's a legitimate reason to delay things, to delay things even further. As though they hadn't already announced themselves as completely opposed to this nomination anyway. As if they hadn't already promised the far left they would lead the fight to bring this nomination down, whatever it took, whatever the cost, whatever it took, whatever the cost. And, and what you're saying, if, if I understand it, is that the allegations by Dr. Ford, Ms. Ramirez, and Ms. Fetnick, Swetnick um, are, are wrong. Yeah, that, that is emphatically what I'm saying. Emphatically. The Swetnick thing is a joke. That is a farce. Would you like to say more about it? No. Okay. <laughs> this has been, as someone put it in an article this morning, a grotesque carnival. In my opinion, this has been an intergalactic freak show. As far as I'm concerned, Congress has hit rock bottom and started to dig. Now, Senator Feinstein talked about this earlier, and she's right. How we treat women in America does matter. This is no country for creepy old men or young men or middle-aged men. But this is no country at all, in my opinion, at least not the kind of country I want to live in, without due process. Both the accuser and the accused is entitled to, are entitled to respect and fairness and, yes, to due process. To the person who leaked Dr. Ford's letter, to the person who breached Dr. Ford's anonymity, and to the person who did not tell her she could have avoided this by testifying privately in her home in California. You know who you are. Was it communicated to you by your counsel or someone else that the committee had asked to interview you and that they offered to come out to California to do so? We're going to object, Mr. Chairman, to any uh, call for privileged conversations between counsel and Dr. Ford. Would, would, could, could, we, could you validate the fact that the offer was made without her saying a word? Is it possible for that question to be answered without violating any uh, consul relationships? Can I say something to you? Do you mind if I say something to you directly? Yeah. Um, 
I just appreciate that you did offer that. I wasn't clear on what the offer was. If you were going to come out to see me, I would have happily hosted you and had you had been happy to speak with you out there. I just did not, it wasn't clear to me that that was the case. You should bow your head in shame, in my opinion, and you should hang your, hide your head in a bag every day for the rest of your natural life. This confirmation process has become a national disgrace. The Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process, but you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. Since my nomination in July, there's been a frenzy on the left to come up with something, anything, to block my confirmation. Shortly after I was nominated, the Democratic Senate leader said he would, quote, oppose me with everything he's got. A Democratic senator on this committee publicly, publicly referred to me as evil. Evil. Think about that word. And said that those who supported me were, quote, complicit in evil. Another Democratic senator on this committee said, quote, Judge Kavanaugh is your worst nightmare. To the Parkland students, if you care about common sense, gun violence protection, Judge Kavanaugh is your worst nightmare. A former head of the Democratic National Committee said, quote, Judge Kavanaugh will threaten the lives of millions of Americans for decades to come. I understand the passions of the moment, but I would say to those senators, your words have meaning. Millions of Americans listened carefully to you. Given comments like those, is it any surprise that people have been willing to do anything to make any physical threat against my family, to send any violent email to my wife? to make any kind of allegation against me and against my friends, to blow me up and take me down. You sowed the wind. For decades to come, I fear that the whole country will reap the whirlwind. Here are the facts that we do have. Hundreds of men and women who have known Brett Kavanaugh across his life have written or spoken out that he is a man of strong character and tremendous integrity. Numerous witnesses testified before the Judiciary Committee that he's a trusted mentor, a loyal friend, and a lifelong champion of women. More than 75 women gathered last week to share their decades-old knowledge of Judge Kavanaugh as a, quote, responsible guy who treats us with kindness and respect and a true gentleman in all aspects of his life. And separately, of course, it remains beyond reasonable dispute that Judge Kavanaugh's legal brilliance and excellence on the bench make him one of the very most qualified Supreme Court nominees in the history of our country. All of these facts are quite clearly on one side. Maybe that's why the Democrats are so panicked. Maybe that's why they're so willing to try to bring down this nominee. In the meantime, a good and honorable man and his family are receiving death threats. They're the subject of smears and are facing Senate Democrats who say he has no presumption of innocence because they don't agree with his judicial philosophy. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. Boy, y'all want power. God, I hope you never get it. I hope the American people can see through this sham that you knew about it and you held it. You had no intention of protecting Dr. Ford. None. She's as much of a victim as you are. God, I hate to say it because these have been my friends. But let me tell you, when it comes to this, you're looking for a fair process. You came to the wrong town at the wrong time, my friend. To my Republican colleagues, if you vote no, 
You're legitimizing the most despicable thing I have seen in my time in politics. You want this seat? I hope you never get it. I hope you're on the Supreme Court. That's exactly where you should be. And I hope that the American people will see through this charade. And I want to make it perfectly clear, Mr. President, Judge Kavanaugh will be voted on here on the Senate floor. Up or down, on the Senate floor, this fine nominee to the Supreme Court will receive a vote in this Senate in the near future.